is my brand new Polymaster 1703M01B Bluetooth Gamma spectro Spectroscopic Dosimeter. Good God, it's a lot of that. It's Bluetooth. It can do gamma spectroscopy. It's a dosimeter, blah, blah, blah. Cesium iodide, that lame dope crystal, tiny little Geiger counter, everything. I'm going to put out a full video on this pretty soon, by the way. This is just a teaser. Tomorrow I'm going to build the video. Now let me start out by calibrating the unit. I'm going to calibrate it to our background, and that takes about 30 or 40 seconds to do, so I'm going to time lapse it so it's really, really fast. Well, not time lapse it, but time speed it up. So here we go, it's speeding up. You see it, it'll shoot across really, really fast. That takes like 30 seconds or more. A good idea. Temperature calibrates, radioactivity calibrates the whole nine yards. All right, it's done. Super fast. And now we're going to expose it to a uh, Fiesta Wear plate. Radioactive red. Let's see, where is that? There it is. Whoa, look at that. Now, that Fiesta Wear plate is, is quite active, don't get me wrong, but it's actually not a very potent gamma emitter. Contrary to popular belief, it puts out mostly beta and alpha. There, there's plenty of gamma, don't get me wrong, but actually not, not, not an infinitely large amount. The Polymaster actually doesn't pick it up until it's about a foot away or so. If you hold it about two feet away, I think it will pick it up, but it takes it a little while. Um, a Geiger counter actually does a better job in this case. It depends really on what you're looking at. If you have a gamma emitter, of course, the Polymaster goes bananas if it gets even close to it. It just depends on what you're looking at. So we'll put that down. And it's registering in microsieverts per hour. As you see, it's 0.1 microsieverts per hour. And that is actually based on the energy hitting the cesium iodide thallium dope detector. It's not referenced to cesium-137 or anything goofy like that. It's the real, real enchilada. Now we're back to just a little bit above background. Alright, so I'm turning on the Bluetooth, and then I'll connect it to the computer, and we'll take a look and see what our counts per second look like. <clears throat> now, if we look at this screen here, it's actually in uh, micro Rentgens, which is really, really annoying. I don't know why the software is showing me in micro Rentgens. Um, I might need to download a different version that's in micro Sieverts. But um, anyhow, as you can see, I have seven, eight counts per minute as a back, uh, sorry, per second as a background. And uh, well, the second I put the plate near it, it's going to shoot up with an alarm. See, I have a pretty, pretty low amount, like three micro rentgens per hour is a, is, a, is a background. It's not very much at all. Now, let's see. The plate should show up in just a second here. And we'll get an immediate alarm. Where did I put the plate? There we go. There's the plate. Look at that. It shoots up to an immediate alarm. It's pretty crazy stuff. All right, and you look, you can see we're hitting like 40 to 50 um, counts per second here, and we're up at, um, let's see, in microsieverts, that's about like what, 0.2 microsieverts per hour, I think, off the top of my head. Something like that. I think it's, um, I think it, you multiply it by 100 to get the answer. Hmm. Well, anyway, the point of the matter is it's, um, not really that hot. Now let's do an an, an auto an isotopic uh, identif identification. This is going to tell us what isotopes are in this. And I time lapsed it. It actually takes a while for it to figure out, like maybe a minute or two. And there it goes. This is time sped up, and it will detect in just a few more seconds here what's in the plate, or at least it'll attempt. This is like a rapid uh, uh, identification. Come on, you see the little spectrum forming down there, although this isn't the spectroscopic function, by the way. It's way better than this. This is just like the little isotope identifier. Come on. I know it's a tough one, but I have faith in you. You can find the uranium. Come on. Uranium-238. Uranium-238. Come on. Maybe some 235 as well. Let's see what it sees. Come on. And it should be just about done if I write. There we go. It found uranium-238. Well, isn't that nice of it? Well, we can also do a full spectrum, too. And the full spectrum is a little bit better, and it shows you a little bit more information. This little rapid function is great, though, when you're trying to figure out what something is really, really fast, and you don't want to spend the time to, like, pour over a spectrum. And look at that, it shows you its statistical certainty and so on. Alrighty. Let's do a spectrum now. 
and we'll switch to spectrum mode which I clicked there it goes now as you can see I have 512 channels starting from 0 to 511 and it's starting out I think I sped this up too there we go yeah time sped this up too I think we'll change it for energy per channel and you see we go up pretty high in the energy over 3 MeV in energy but we start only started around 33 keV there it goes like I massively time-lapsed this. And then we'll run the, the isotope identification feature in this too. And you're going to see something interesting. Something really, really, really interesting. I think you'll find it quite neat. And there it goes. By the way, you can zoom in on all of this. You don't have to see this little tiny uh, um, thing right here. You can actually zoom in. Let's uh, change to a logarithmic view. There's your classic logarithmic view everything's all nice and blown up now we'll stop this thing okay let's look at some energies you can double click on the energies and it'll show you you can even drag the little thing around it'll show you counts energy it can be plus or minus a little bit because it's um it auto calibrates itself so you take it with a little bit of a grain of salt but it's not really that bad especially if you calibrate it first Okay, that's a pretty nice little spectrum since I did it pretty quickly. Okay, now we'll zoom in on it and show you how the zoom function works. Look at that. Not bad. Get a better view, pull it in, take a look, move stuff around, get an idea of counts and everything. I mean, this isn't like a, you know, high purity germanium detector with $10,000 worth of software and equipment and whatever, but it's not bad. Now let's do an isotope identification. Here's where it gets really interesting. Interesting what it found, isn't it? As you can see, uranium-235, uranium-238, which are both expected to be found inside of uranium, those two particular isotopes. The BG refers to background. It's just saying I've got a whole chunk of stuff I can't identify. That's interesting. Now, the plutonium-241... I don't know where it's getting that from. That might be in there. I can't imagine why it would be, but that could be a miss uh, uh, do. It's pretty low, too. Now, look at this in uranium enrichment. 0.3 is way below what I'd expect to see in, in, in actual normal uranium. That's actually more like depleted uranium levels of enrichment right there. Well, actually not enrichment, but depletion. So, interesting. This could be depleted uranium, for all I can tell from this spectrum. I'm just testing this thing out to start with, which is kind of neat. The enrichment testing feature is also kind of neat. We'll test that in some natural uranium in the main video and test it all out. So that's that. Anyhow, uh, I bet you can't wait till tomorrow. I'm going to put all kinds of isotopes up against this thing and see what it can do. This has been Tom from anti-proton.com. And uh, see you all later.